What's up, y'all? Insan Davery here, and today I wanted to film a sketchbook tour. <gasps> All right, so this is my first sketchbook of 2018. It goes from the beginning of January to about the middle of May. And that's a little bit of a long time for me to spend on a sketchbook, but I did struggle quite a bit. And um, I think you'll see that in the upcoming pages. So this first page, I usually don't start on the first page of my sketchbooks, just because it sort of helps uh, release a bit of that first page pressure. You know, the first page is the first thing people see in your sketchbook, so you want to make it really good. So usually I skip to the second page and do that first. And I always intend to come back and put something special on the first page, but usually I actually don't end up doing that. Um, but this page, first page, was filled out for me by my cousins. Um, so they were experimenting with my watercolor pencils that I had gotten as a Christmas gift. This page is two layered, so underneath you've got abstract marker doodles, and then on top you've got sort of a preliminary script I had been making for a short comic called The Punk and the Pigeon. And at this point in time, I was thinking that maybe it would be a choose-your-own-adventure game because I really want to, at some point, try and combine the comic medium with a choose-your-own-adventure game style medium. But I sort of realized that I didn't, although I had a very solid act one and sort of an ending in mind, I didn't really have a good middle and it just wasn't coalescing. So that idea ended up getting scrapped, but this was the original sort of layout for how it would go. I also sketched a, a fancy tea bag that I got. More abstract doodles as well as various words. Words, words, words. Here is experimenting with watercolor pencils. I really like how this turned out. And more of my cousins playing with my pencils. Some sketches of some seaside birds. Um, noodling around a bit, there's a little guy I made out of a kneaded eraser that I sketched before I, you know, squished him back so that I could use my kneaded eraser again. Um, Dick and Bonghead from Dick and Bonghead. Um, a little character based on the seaside birds. Um, this looks like more from Cameron and Cora. Here, I was debating whether I wanted the p pigeon from the punk and the pigeon to be uh, the typical kind of feral pigeon you tend to see around the city or a fancy pigeon. I ended up going in the direction of having it be more of a standard feral pigeon, but these were all sketches and studies I did when I was toying with the idea of having the pigeon be a fancy pigeon, and most of these I believe were referenced from the Tumblr slash Instagram user Rex the Pigeon. Rex is very cute and her owner Quail is very very knowledgeable, so I recommend checking out that if you are at all interested in pigeons, it's really great. Diary Comics, Diary Comics, experimenting with using different colors of markers, you know, sketching in a lighter color and then going over in a darker color, lighting and shadow experiments with markers. There is a rough draft and then a finished version of a comic, a commission, and I was briefly toying with the idea of making a lyric comic featuring lyrics from the song If by Bread with the characters from the Song of Achilles, which I was reading at the time, but that ended up not happening. Beautiful song, though. There's more of that character from uh, back over here. This was kind of like a little cat face I did, and I drew more there. Here I was trying to figure out how to draw sheer cloth draped over a face, and I didn't get very far. This I was actually uh, trying to follow along with a Bob Ross tutorial. Um, I was using markers since I don't have oil paints, and uh, it ended up looking very, very different from his, obviously, because one, I'm not Bob Ross, and two, markers and oil paints are two very different mediums, but I still think it came out pretty good. Here's more Cameron and Cora doing various splashes and scribbles with my watercolor pencils, as well as a little, little Corvid I drew while they were doing that. Not much on this page. I think there was an idea for a comic involving farts that I never did, because it's really kind of dumb, and a commission I never finished more possibilities for the punk and the pigeon, dick and bong head, diary comic I never made about getting blisters at a new job. At the same uh, new job, it ended up raining halfway through the day and I had to borrow a raincoat that was approximately this big on me, so I drew it. And there's dick, there's bong head, there's a couple uh, suggestions I took. 
more experimenting with markers, another Tumblr request, a diary comic. Experimenting with designs for the punk and the pigeon. This is when I decided maybe I wanted more of a feral, typical type pigeon and possible humanizations and uh, cactuses. A map for the part of Dick and Bong had of a possible way for the suburbia part and the agricultural and factory parts to intersect. More diary comics. Um, pigeon. Looks like I pasted in some doodles of the pigeon I did in my workplace. Diary comic about face soap. Uh, you know, I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel when I start doing diary comics about face soap. Um, more from Cameron and Cora. I've noticed when little kids use sketchbooks, they really don't go in, you know, one straight line through the sketchbook. They tend to jump around. Character sketches for a character named Laurel that I don't think I've talked about that story very much and probably because it's not very well thought out, but um, that's one of my extreme backburner stories is a story called Sprigs of Laurel and Asphodel. Uh, diary comic and more of Laurel on the other page, and a uh, Homestuck comic that never ended up getting fully done, although I still think it's pretty funny. Based on dialogue from the life and times of Tim, can't take credit for any of those lines. Um, rough drafts for the punk and the pigeon, and these are actually pretty close to what ends up being in the final comic. I'm currently working on turning those rough drafts into the final comic. It's about one page to go as of this filming, um, plus color. Marker and pen doodles. Really like how this one turned out. More rough drafts and a scrapped diary comic. More pen and marker doodles. More diary comics. And more of the same. Pen and ink doodles. Looks like I attempted to make that Homestuck comic into a full-blown comic, but never ended up finishing that. Pen and ink doodles. Oh, here I think I'm trying to nail down my headcanon for the book Morris by E.M. Forster. It's my favorite book. In my head, uh, the character Morris would be played by Hornblower era Yon Griffio, so that was my attempts to draw Hornblower era Yon Griffio as Morris and failing miserably. He's got a very unique face. It's hard to draw. Some Animal Crossing trying to get out of my slump. Quick diary comic. Another diary comic and more doodles. More rough draft, more diary comic, pen and marker doodles, trying to um, break out of my slump by doodling random shapes and then making faces based on those shapes. It's also one of the first drawings of the punk and the punk and the pigeon. That's sort of a design I end up expanding on. Punk and the pigeon rough draft, diary comic, more ballpoint pen and marker doodles. I'm not sure how much it comes across, but I can see in these pages that I'm really, really struggling through art block, and I. Um, curious to know how much that comes across. Ah, there I was debating whether or not to make the pigeon from the Punk and the Pigeon a Lahore pigeon. Um, that is one of my favorite breeds of fancy pigeons, but again, like I mentioned, I end up not going in that direction, but still very fun. More Animal Crossing. This must be around Easter because I recognize that creepy little guy from the uh, Easter event. I get the zipper. Scrapped diary comic. Finished diary comic. Here was my first attempt at the Punk in the Pigeon, and I end up not continuing this just because the color, I didn't like how the color was turning out, and I just wasn't feeling good about it. So uh, that's an unfinished first draft page of the Punk in the Pigeon. Uh, more of the same, it's hard to, I mean, it's just faces and faces and diary comics over and over again. More Yon Griffio. That one I think I got closest, although that one's also kind of good. Those eyes are very close to Young Griffio's eyes. So getting closer, but not quite there. More doodles trying to get out of my funk. Really like that picture of the seagull. It's really good. I forgot that was in there. Um, morning dove studies. These are all referenced from the fantastic pictures of Ostrossel. Um, that's their name on both Tumblr and Instagram. If you like bird photography, I really recommend checking them out. Some, actually some uh, planning from Coda over there, and a more finalized version of the design from the punk and the pigeon of the punk. Um, there's a pretty good blue jay sketch, and my uh, little label that went on my receipts jar for the 2017-2018 tax year. So I try to keep track of all my art receipts. Right there is a 
um, design for a, a design for a character from a short comic for an anthology that I never submitted to because I never finished the outline of the short comic, but it was a uh, gay love story about a young monk who is bringing an illuminated manuscript to its new owner, but gets accosted by highway robbers and ends up getting injured in the attack after falling off his horse and is nursed back to health by a well-meaning outlaw that he runs into in the woods. I don't know. It was, it was a cute idea. I may go back to it at some point because I really would like to do a story based around medieval monks. Don't ask me why. That was a sketch for a brewer's blackbird, but then I sort of changed it into a side profile of this Totoro-like character. I thought that ended up being pretty cute, actually. More of the monk from that story I just said, and more trying to sort of nail down his design. I think I really like that one. I believe this is experimenting not with watercolor pencils, but with these watercolor markers I got. If I remember correctly, they only have blue, red, and yellow, so I was sort of trying to mix different colors using the markers. A fun concept, but I didn't really end up using them just because there was nothing they couldn't do that either alcohol markers or watercolors themselves could do better. These are also the watercolor markers, but these are just straight with the watercolor markers without adding water to them. Um, they have almost a highlighter-ish quality, it seems. And here is the last, and we finish up with a little watercolor marker doodle of the punk from The Punk and the Pigeon. And that was my first sketchbook of 2018. So it took me about four and a half months, and I spent most of this sketchbook really struggling with art block. And if you two are struggling with art block, the main lessons I learned in this sketchbook were you can't really force yourself out of art block. You can't just wait for it to stop. You just sort of have to keep trying new things and filling pages one at a time. You know, just concentrate on filling the pages with whatever, and eventually you'll either stop having art block or you'll stumble on something that actually works. But until then, just try not to put too much pressure on yourself. So thank you for watching. If you liked what you see here, do consider pledging to me on Patreon. I will leave a link down in the description and I will see you next time. Stay calm, y'all.